Hey guys, welcome to another lesson in Science 24, Unit 4. I'm Mr. Adamson, and today we're going to talk about some traffic safety stuff. Now, to deal with collisions, so collisions cause damage to more than just cars, and you all know that when you get into an accident, there's a lot of different things that can happen, but the two specific examples or ways we're going to talk about here is physical and emotional stress that results from an accident, and this is referred to as trauma. Now, physical trauma can range from cuts and scrapes to more serious and lasting injuries like broken bones, whiplash, and brain damage, which can be pretty serious. Now, some of these injuries can heal on their own, while others do not, such as those that involve the brain or amputation or the spinal cord, where if you might not ever be able to walk again or use your limbs, so being paraplegic or quadriplegic. And usually physical traumas are visible. Now, emotional traumas, they are not visible. So this could be where some people are fearful to drive after an accident or experience grief or regret after a collision that causes injury or death. And I mean, they're both very, very different. I mean, one with the physical can heal. Maybe it doesn't, but it's something you can see. But when emotional, it's, I mean, it's doing with your feelings. It's uh, depression, a lot of different things that can go into that. Now, on, a, on the physical note, talking about whiplash, and whiplash occurs when muscles and ligaments of the neck are sprained. And so just to see right now, you can, if we look at this picture right here, we can see hyperextension of the neck. So the body goes forward, but the head stays in place, and that really torques on the back of the neck here. And then as you stop and your seatbelt stops you, so this is happens if you're getting rear-ended in a vehicle, then your head follows the rest of your body and stretches the back side of your neck here. So you really damage the muscles in your neck right here. And really, it's, it, likes, it's, it sprains them is what it does. So just imagine if you've sprained your ankle or your wrist before, you've pushed it too far on a way that it doesn't go. It's the same thing as your neck. Now, talking about grief, how would you feel if you were driving carelessly and got into a serious accident? How would you feel if the passengers in your vehicle were hurt or killed? Or how would you feel if you hurt or killed someone in another vehicle? So these are all questions to think that can go into grief and the emotional side of a collision injury. Now, it can take a long time to get over the feelings of regret and sadness we call grief. Sometimes people feel unable to talk about their feelings or not allow themselves a long enough adjustment time to get used to their grief. And the biggest thing, talking to a professional who understands grief may help people deal with this type of emotional pain and it's not like it's just a cut that can you can cover up and heal grief is not something you can just cover up it's something you have to work through and learn to understand and using a professional's help may hopefully make that process easier this little infographic here just shows the road traffic injuries so some of the facts so if we start up in the very top here we can see that there are 1.24 million road traffic deaths occur every year and we're talking about in the whole world here now, it's the number one cause of death among those aged 15 to 29 years old, so people right in your age category. We can see three out of four road deaths are men, and I mean, men are usually more aggressive drivers, they're taking more risks in their driving, and therefore they have a higher chance of being killed, and most of the time they are the ones who are being killed. Now, although middle-income countries have only half of the world's vehicles, they have 80% of the world's road traffic deaths. So now, middle income, they probably not as well ed um, educated, maybe don't have quite the same road safety, so therefore we're looking at more deaths. Now, middle income countries have the highest road traffic death rates, and so we can see here with the yellow, and high income countries, so Canada would be considered that high income country, and we actually have low compared to some others. But then we don't have as much population maybe to some of these countries. We also have maybe better education. Now if you look here on an actual global viewpoint, we can see that the chance of dying in a road traffic crash depends on where you live. In the Americas, so we're qualified in North America, we're at 16.1%. But well, if we look all the way over here in Africa, 24.1%. Now again, maybe not having the same road safety, so roads that are actually safe and not having the same actual driver's education that we have in the Americas. Now 50% of all road traffic deaths are among pedestrians, cyclists, and motorcyclists. So 22% for pedestrians, 5% for cyclists, and 23% for motorcyclists. And I mean 20 motorcyclists probably being the highest because they are driving at faster rates, they're in a smaller vehicle, then if they do get hurt, 
I mean, there probably is a higher chance of death because of the high speeds that they're going at. Now, talking about collisions even further, there's things that we can do for protection and prevention of them. Now, there are safety features built into vehicles and roads to protect you in case of a, excuse me, a road accident. There are laws concerning proper driving procedures and commercial campaigns designed, designed to make us aware of the specific dangers. So, I mean, just the one here with Otto from The Simpsons, and then another one shows you, I mean, that you shouldn't be reading, doing your makeup, eating on your cell phone. I mean, a lot of these things that can distract us from our from the road and the conditions that are on it. Now, safety features of vehicles. So in Alberta, the law says that every person in a car must wear a seat belt and small children must be restrained using specific restraints. Airbags inflate when a collision occurs and they cushion the drivers and passengers against impact. We have anti-lock braking systems known as ABS and these provide better stopping ability in slippery conditions. And there are crumple zones are on the outer parts of our car near the bumpers. And when these zones crumple, they take the energy of the collision so the passengers feel less effect. And we also have side impact beams. And these are steel beams in the doors, not steam beams. It should be steel beams in the doors. And these prevent the doors from caving in. This graph here shows you that the uh, national seatbelt use compared to occupant fatalities. So it's kind of the quite bottom question is what happened to the number of fatalities since seatbelt laws were passed in 1987? So we can see here the blue bars are the fatalities. So we can see from 1988 all the way to 2000, we can see a downward trend in the statistics. The light blue line here is the occupants of light duty vehicles and the passenger car drivers. So passengers riding with the driver we can see here. And so we can see that the fatalities were around between the, the 80 and 70th percentile here. And as we go along the years, we can see if we look over here, this is seat belt use that as seat belt use increases, our fatalities are going down. So again, with this purple line, seat belt use is increasing, fatalities are going down. So I mean, seat, with this graph just goes to show that seat belts do save lives. Now a couple more info, info graphs here. We can see seat belts, the facts. So wearing a seat belt reduces the risk of fatal energy, injury by up to 50% for front seat occupants and up to 75% for rear seat occupants. Seatbelt laws should cover both the front and rear seat occupants and 111 countries have comprehensive seatbelt laws covering all car occupants and this covers 4.8 billion people or 69% of the world's population. And to effectively increase seatbelt wearing rates, legislation must be supported with strong and sustained police enforcement, but only a quarter of all countries report good enforcement by their seatbelt laws. And if we look down here, all the green countries, these countries are represented with a national seatbelt law covering all car occupants. So, you know, which is actually really interesting, you look at the United States, there is not seatbelt laws there. And then this next infograph here deals with the child restraints. So child restraints reduce the likelihood of a fatal crash by approximately 70% for infants and between 54% to 80% for young children who are in boosters. Now 96 countries have implemented a child restraint law. This covers 2.2 billion people or just 32% of the world's population, which is really scary because I mean, dealing with small children, they're not buckled in properly. One, they could be hurt quite badly by the buckle itself or the, or the airbag, or two, they can become a projectile in a car and hurt a lot of other people. An enforcement of child restraint law remains low in most countries and only 17% or 17 countries or 9% report good enforcement of child restraint laws. And I would say that we are one of them. I know that if we have, if you are not, if you are stopped and not having a, your child restraint installed properly, you can get a ticket or you have to take a class. And green represents countries of the national child restraint law. And actually Canada should be green now. They do have child restraint laws within Canada here.
Now, vehicle maintenance, the safety features in vehicles only protects you when you are working properly and maintenance or continued care makes sure that they continue to do so. So such things as, such things as our tires, so worn tires with little or no tread skid and slip easily. And this affects the time it takes to stop, steering, taking care of the steering mechanism and all parts connected to it ensure that you can move the car where you want and when you need to. And things like the windshield wipers, these keep your windshield clear so you can see the road ahead. And I mean, little things that you just don't think of, even the windshield itself, if it's cracked and it's in your line of sight, can, can affect what you can see ahead. This is just kind of a vehicle maintenance checklist at every 5,000 kilometers. You should be doing regular maintenance on your vehicle, checking the oil, checking the tires, checking the air filters. And this kind of just goes through what you check and need to change in a vehicle. But again, about every 5,000 kilometers. And most vehicles come with a checklist in them and how what you should go through. Now roads are also designed to be as safe as possible. Most roadways have safety features such as rumble strips to remind people to slow down before intersections or in school zones. Reflectors are used to a vehicle's lights, so or when a vehicle's lights will shine them at night and notify drivers of road laws. Guardrails protect vehicles from falling over steep edges or going through ditches onto another oncoming lane. Flashing yellow lights to warn pedestrian crossings or upcoming intersections that are important or not and or not visible. Breakaway light poles fall apart on impact to reduce force in a collision. And the traffic lights stay yellow before turning red for every one sec or for one second for every 16 kilometers an hour of the posted speed limit. So meaning if the speed limit on a street is 60 kilometers an hour, then a light would stay yellow for four seconds. Because if we break that down, there is roughly four 16 kilometers an hour in a 60. So that means we got roughly around four seconds before it turns red. So these are just a few of the, uh, tr some ideas about traffic safety, safe roads, vehicle maintenance, some of the laws that we have in play. And we're going to further get into there. We're going to talk more about the math and the, the physics that's behind vehicles and their movement, and then talk about seat belts and airbags and more safety features within vehicles. But hopefully you can take something out of today. So thanks for listening.